Okay, thanks, David. Uh, welcome to everyone. Uh, I think it's good morning to just about everyone, unless we have folks overseas. Um, again, we're going to be going through the the basics of the formatted product tool. The idea is in conjunction with the uh, advanced notice that we we publish significant changes to the schedules program. We will also be conducting uh, a, a webinar, a live webinar, so that we can hopefully answer any questions that aren't clear in the announcement. Uh, one of the things I want to point out, though, is that uh, we, we are communicating uh, in a large part these days through our Interact site www.gsa.interact, and uh, that's the website, and or the VSC, the Vendor Support Center, but primarily it's going to move towards the uh, Interact site. So as you saw from the poll that David mentioned, uh, about 75% of the folks heard about this through an email. Well, it was posted on Interact, and we're going to as I said, I'm just going to beat the dead horse here. Interact is, is something you want to bookmark uh, and check fairly regularly to get updates on the schedules program. There are blogs there. Uh, it'll be a good source of information uh, and changes and updates and clarifications uh, uh, as we go forward. Uh, there just a place you want to be checking as, as an industry partner with GSA. Uh, so before I turn it over, I just want to highlight the you know, sort of the key aspects of this formatted product tool, which we're going to discuss today. Uh, while the initial uh, effort to rebaseline and upload this, this information in a new uh, digital template, which will uh, we're going to go over a lot of the benefits that it'll, it'll have for everyone. But the key things are it's, it's going to standardize part numbers and product descriptions. It's going to result in our offerings, your offerings, getting up to advantage much more quickly. Uh, it's going to be a better shopping experience for our customers. Uh, it'll give you industry market intelligence on on your competitors and the pricing that uh, is uh, available for the customers. And we hope that through all of this, it will uh, provide a, a greater level of confidence across the government in the schedules program and its pricing and its offerings being current and, uh, and, and well positioned. And so that will uh, benefit all of us in uh, having uh, the schedules vehicle be uh, a, a popular resource for our customer agencies to go to. So without uh, belaboring it anymore, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Stoker. Uh, and then we've got two, or two other participants that are going to be delivering information to you. And then there'll be uh, plenty of time for questions and answers at the end of the presentation. Here you go, Kelly. Thank you, Robin. And I would also like to add my welcome to everybody. Um, we had a lot of good uh, conversation generated from the first webinar we did. Um, I hope we um, will address a lot of the commonly asked questions in this one. Um, but we do uh, really appreciate you taking your time out to, to learn about FPT. We're very excited about that. So thank you very much for your participation today. Um, the, the first thing that I kind of need to go over, just a little bit of, of uh, housekeeping, is the disclaimer. And you probably saw this disclaimer on the Interact site as well. Um, but really what we're trying to make um, sure that we let everybody know here is that you know, we're getting tons and tons of questions, which is great. Um, but we may not be able to answer each question individually. But what we definitely are doing is consolidating commonly asked questions and identical questions, and we're updating those in a Q&A document 
that we will be getting posted on that Interact site as soon as we can get through all of the Q&As that we'll get today, um, get good answers developed for the ones that we may not be able to get to. Um, so we may not be able to answer your individual question, but we will make sure that we answer um, the questions that we get and maybe consolidate those you know, similar or like questions. The other thing that this disclaimer is telling you is that what we have given you information on is the refresh to incorporate FPT um, as we have it um, prepared right now. Uh, as we go through this process, as we talk to industry, as we um, get prepared to actually roll out that refresh, we may find that we've missed a thing or two and make a few corrections or tweaks to the refresh solicitation document or the mass modification that we'll be issuing to incorporate FPT into your contracts. So the disclaimer also tells you to please make sure and read carefully the actual refresh solicitation in the mass mod document once they come out um, in case we've had to do a little bit of tweaking or what have you on that. So that's just our little bit of um, housekeeping. So we already had the introductions. Robin's the director of the Mass Program Office, and Steve Hutchinson is also joining us. He's a supervisory procurement analyst in the Mass Program Division. Um, and then a little bit later on, Keanu Cobbins, who's a program analyst in the Mass Program Division, and Josh Royko, who's the director of the Program Analysis Division, are also going to be going over quite in depth um, FPT. Um, the, you're going to see screenshots. You're going to get a lot of information, as Robin said, about the benefits of FPT. So we'll move on to how are we going to implement this into your schedule contracts and for new offers out there. So we did post that Interact notice on June the 20th announcing the rollout. Um, right now we're planning on issuing refresh solicitations a little bit later in July. Uh, for Schedules 58, 1, and 72, along with the mass modification, which will incorporate the, the FPT, the Formatted Product Tool. The other schedules that are um, going to be in the rollout initially listed there, they'll be rolled out over the next few months, and um, eventually we'll get all the remaining product schedules phased in um, you know, every few weeks. We are taking more of a phased approach uh, to make sure that, that if there is a, a hiccup or some issue that we didn't anticipate, we want to get those little things corrected before we continue the rollout process um, so that we don't just frustrate our industry partners and, and you know, make it more difficult than it needs to be. So that's why we're not just sort of blasting it out all at one time. Um, we do recognize for you guys, you schedules that are going earlier in the process in, in the next couple of uh, months, that we are hitting you at a very bad time of the year, at the end of the fiscal year. And unfortunately, that's just a product of um, the development, getting it ready, getting it to a point where we can roll it out. Um, and so we do recognize that this is a very busy time of year for you, and so we're, we're wanting to let you know that your contracting officers, your contract specialists are going to be very willing to work with you um, if you need to take some time to handle your end of year business and then come back to uh, accepting that mass mod and uh, doing the things you need to do to get FPT implemented. Um, we are um, encouraging vendors to go ahead and accept the mass mod as soon as possible um, in order to, to get their baseline, their contract baseline and get their standardized part numbers and all that stuff done. And, we're, and we will talk much more about that uh, in a bit. Uh, we would ask that you try to get that baselining done within 60 days of accepting the mod, but we recognize the time of year it is. And so um, we will work with you on uh, that timing if you need, like I say, to handle into your business and then come back to working on 
the SPT mass mod, we're going to work with you on that. So I did just want to say, um, yeah, we recognize it's a rough time of year, but this is very important. It's got tremendous benefits for industry partners, for our customers, you know, for everybody. So we really wanted to get it out um, and get moving on it. So I just did want to mention that. Um, with the mod itself, we are going to be making quite a few uh, clause changes in order to accommodate the FPT upgrade um, and the upfront electronic submission of your data now as opposed to some of the more manual ways that your data was updated before, you know, through uploaded spreadsheets or things like that. So to that end, we have made some changes to um, quite a few clauses. All the clauses are listed here. The full text proposed versions of the changes are um, posted on the Interact notice. So um, if you do have questions about those, feel free to include those um, in your um, chat, your chat questions at the end when we get to the Q&A. And we'll do our best to address questions about the specific clauses. But the majority of these clause changes are really only to accommodate that transition from a more of a manual paper submission process to an electronic transmission process. So there aren't significant changes to the clauses themselves. It's really more in how we're going to be getting that information from you. Um, and you'll also note here that there are a couple of clauses that are applicable only to Schedule 70. So if you do happen to be a Schedule 70 vendor and Schedule 70 vendor and you're on with us today, those two do apply to you. For everybody else, you don't need to, to worry about those. Um, so we're going to be making the clause changes and then in addition to um, clause changes, you know, will be the actual incorporation of FPT into your, um, to your contracts and to talk about some of the benefits that you're going to receive, I'm going to turn it over to Josh Royko and let him cover uh, the FPT tool itself. Great. Thank you, Kelly. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for taking the time to join us today to learn a little bit more about the formatted product tool. Uh, the formatted product tool is a really exciting project. And, and just to take a step back, it's, it's not its own module. It's a series of enhancements um, to e-offer and e-mod to uh, help uh, contracting officers analyze pricing and standardize part numbers to improve the customer shopping experience. Um, FPT will provide contractors with valuable information in terms of where their products are positioned in the marketplace. Uh, and this will only increase uh, over time as we begin to fold in data from the transaction data reporting rules to provide uh, even more market intelligence, such as uh, market basket information and um, commonly sold items, um, pairs of items that are sold together. Um, by understanding where uh, your offered pricing falls on the, on the spectrum of um, other contractors' pricing, you'll be able to make decisions about the best mix of products to offer the government and better understand your competitive position uh, potentially for use in negotiation with your suppliers. Uh, additionally, by leveraging data analytics, our contracting officers will have a much uh, quicker market research process to be significantly streamlined so they'll be able to review and hopefully approve modification requests much more quickly. Okay, go to the next slide here. Um, one of the big wins here is the automated upload process to GSA Advantage. So what this means is no more SIP or CORS review. The data will push directly from eOffer, eMod to, um, to GSA Advantage, uh, eliminating that SIP process that can often take uh, days to weeks to work through approval. So much quicker uh, time from when your modification is approved to when it actually appears on GSA Advantage. Uh, awarded items will be almost immediately visible. Uh, there could be a few hour uh, delay depending on the size of your catalog. Uh, and it will really enhance the customer shopping experience. Uh, what this means for uh, our contractors is uh, your items will receive consideration based off the contract terms and conditions and factors such as warranty, delivery time, and price, 
as opposed to uh, your NAC for search engine optimization. By grouping all like items on the same master product page, customers will easily find uh, all sources of supply to give them consideration. Uh, so the new offer process under FPP. Um, there's a variety of ways to input data. Uh, Keona Cobbins will be giving you a detailed walkthrough of uh, what that will look like. Um, the data for new offers will be processed to standardized manufacturer part numbers. Um, so what we're doing is taking data from uh, trusted content providers such as manufacturers and major wholesalers uh, where it's available and matching uh, submitted product data to that standard content. Um, and in the office supply area, we've started a working group that uh, has, has focused on gathering that content. Where data is not available from a trusted source such as a uh, manufacturer or a wholesaler, we are standardizing data to the most common representation throughout the supply chain. So, for example, if a hundred uh, vendors uh, call a widget part number 123, um, and one vendor calls it ABC123, if no standard content is available, that will be standardized to part number 123 and the part number prefix would be dropped. So um, where there's not standard uh, trusted content, it's, it's standardized to the most common representation throughout the supply chain. And it's important to note that vendors can review the standardization work and make comments should you feel it's not being uh, standardized appropriately. We are making every effort to ensure that we have a high level of confidence in the standardization. Um, so you shouldn't see, uh, we expect it to be very rare that there would be a standardization done that is not in fact accurate. Um, but we do want to have the opportunity for you to review that and provide comments for additional analysis and evaluation. So in addition to the uh, manufacturer part number standardization, uh, offered pricing will also be evaluated against uh, other items uh, in the government marketplace. And the uh, vendors, when they upload their pricing through the FPT, a uh, report will be generated that flags any prices that are outside of the, uh, the target price range for the contracting officer to review. Um, the same evaluation methodology will be used that we used last year during the competitive pricing initiative. Uh, we have made some enhancements to account for uh, much of the feedback we received in regards to low price outliers and suspected loss leaders. So we're using um, statistical clustering analysis to uh, remove extreme low outliers. Um, there will obviously be cases where a contracting officer uh, will need to review and award prices outside of the target range. So this in no way limits the contracting officer's authority. What it does is help them organize their work and conduct market research instead of manually searching for items on sites such as GSA Advantage. Um, the items outside the range, the vendors will receive uh, the target price range upon submission. Um, so you'll, you'll know how far outside the range you might be uh, and have the opportunity to revise your pricing should you wish to do so. Um, or otherwise, you'll need to provide a comment to the contracting officer to indicate uh, if there's any additional factors you'd like considered, such as um, extended warranty that's included or, um, you know, fast shipping time, such as next day shipping included, uh, no additional charge. So any additional rationale that you'd like to provide to the contracting officer for consideration, you'll have the opportunity to do so there. Um, much like a new offer process, the baseline mod process uh, will be what we'll use for uh, existing contractors to load into the tool. Uh, upon accepting the FPT mass modification, contractors will need to go into eOffer and submit the baseline mod um, within 60 days um, is the target to uh, complete that. Baseline mod works almost identical to the new offer process. Uh, part numbers will be evaluated to uh, be standardized um, to help improve that customer shopping experience and group all like items on GSA Advantage. And the vendor will provide the opportunity to review and hopefully uh, we, we believe our standardization process to be uh, very high accuracy, so accept the uh, proposed standardized part number or provide an explanation of any concerns that they may have as to the item not being matched. Um, Contract pricing will also be evaluated for variability against the established ranges and the vendor will be provided with this information. The initial focus um, is that the, uh, 
the baselining process does not in and of itself constitute uh, or trigger the need for price negotiations, but the contracting officers will be reviewing the data and should they find items that appear to be uh, significantly outside of the range or are raising questions as to uh, their price reasonableness, they may approach you about that and choose to uh, enter negotiations. That's a decision left to the contracting officer and not automatically triggered through this process. Okay, let me go to the next slide here. And it looks like we've close to the end here. Um, most of this I've already covered. Um, again, within the uh, baseline process, looks like my slides have kind of bounced here. Um, so a couple of things to remember, awarded products have to be uploaded in the baseline modification to ensure that you have a complete file to GSA advantage. Um, throughout this process, we're going to now ensure that all items on contract are displayed on GSA advantage. So some vendors, um, had a SIP file that did not fully reflect their complete uh, product list. Um, now we're going to push items directly, so we'll ensure full representation of contract items on GSA Advantage. Only one baseline modification can be submitted, um, so you have to submit the entire catalog at once. Um, it's important to note that we are currently working on enhancements to support larger catalogs. So if you have a catalog over 100,000 items, you'll want to hold off until you receive uh, future uh, notification on the availability of that functionality. I believe that's scheduled for the next six to eight weeks. We'll support catalogs, uh, I think, from 100,000 items to 2 million items. Um, items must still be determined fair and reasonable um, against the MSC and established price variability ranges. And items not found within the range are not considered fair and reasonable. Um, and any further rationale from the vendor may be deleted from contract award. <clears throat> uh, important points, remember, particularly for Schedule 75, 51B, and 70 vendors, uh, if you have a GSA-initiated BPA, you'll need to consider, uh, you'll need to continue using uh, the current EDI or SIP process until some system changes are completed. They are anticipated to be completed in the next eight weeks or so. Uh, we will provide uh, additional information once that functionality is available, so if that's applicable to you, uh, you'll want to make sure that um, you continue using EDI or SIP until that's been deployed. Again, we're looking, uh, hopefully within the next eight weeks or so, we should have that functionality available, um, and we'll, we'll follow up with you as soon as that's complete. Uh, with that, I'd like to uh, introduce you to Keona Cobbins, who will be giving you a detailed run-through of the offer process. Thank you, Josh. Thank you, everybody, for participating today. Uh, again, we're going to walk through some of the screenshots for the e-offer process and a few of the mods. Um, most of you are familiar with e-offer, and the first major change to the process is here on the goods and services screen. As you can see here at the bottom of the screen, there's additional question that we're going to ask is whether you're doing products, services, or products and services both. Um, this question will help determine what you have to supply um, for your product template and or services text file when you're doing your offer process. Once you have responded to that question, you are moved on to the new um, product template wizard. This is where you'll finally start to make the actual decisions about what you're actually offering on your particular um, submission, um, whether or not you're going to be doing discounts, and if those discounts will be offered at the offer, the send, or the line item level. The same with delivery. Delivery is a required field, but you would need to determine whether you're going to do those at the offer, send, or line item level. We have contractor warranty. If you do zonal pricing, you'll need to tell us yes or no to these particular items so that they will show up in the template for you to complete for your pricing element. Um, so the biggest difference you'll see when you go into eOffer now is on the left menu, you'll notice that the wizard will show up there. And when you decide if you're going to do sections at the offer center line item level, you will have different things show up in that 
section under the wizard. If you're doing offer or sin level, there are screens that you have to complete as part of the wizard management. If you're doing things at the line item level, they will all be in your template to complete. So as you can see here, um, the selections were done at the sin or offer level and the zonal pricing, the special charges, special features show up under the wizard in the left menu, meaning that you'll give some information there that will be transferred down into your template. Um, once you've selected that you're going to offer special charges, special features, um, other things that are in the wizard, those tabs become available to select. If you're doing it at the SIN level, as in this example, you would select the SIN that you're going to make that offer against you and then select the items appropriate to that. So for special charges as well as special features uh, or environmental features, you would select for the SIN the items that are applied to that SIN. So we have about 12 items here to choose from. Um, if you're only going to do one day service or next day service or Saturday delivery, that would only apply to that specific SIN. You would not have to respond to that in your template for everything in the um, list here. Like you do with SIP, now you have to say that something is not applicable or, or um, that is not available for that particular SIN. But here we're limiting the number of records you have to respond to by responding to them uh, by selecting them and limiting your choices. Um, the same process works on your environmental and special features as well. You would select the SIN, select the features or charges that apply to that particular SIN, and then you would only respond to those in your template. Um, discounts at the SIN or offer level, you would have to complete the discount screen. You select the SIN that, that that discount applies to and put the start and end ranges and discount amount. As you can see at the bottom of the page here, those discounts then show up uh, at, for that particular SIN. If you're offering more than one SIN for any of the pages that we just discussed, you put in the items for each SIN to move forward. Um, so delivery at the offer or SIN level would then um, transfer down to your line items in your template, um, but you must decide which um, delivery methods you're going to choose for each SIN. So if you do it at the SIN or the offer level, um, that information would then flow down. If you do it at the line item level, you have to enter it just like any other thing. Um, so let, let's jump back and talk about what SIN or offer level and line level means. If you select any of these items at the offer level, it applies to everything in that offer. If you select them at the SIN level, it could be different per SIN. If you do it at the line item level, you can choose whatever information per line item. So just when you're going through those sections, just remember that when you do it at the center offer, it kind of applies to the whole of those items. Now that you have given us the basic information for your template, it's now start to cap time to capture the pricing information. So we have three methods where you can do this. You can do this by either downloading the template, which will give you a downloadable Excel that you can save to your desktop and work on offline by supplying all the information. You can do this on screen by supplying it, the information on screen in an Excel format, um, you, which would allow you to copy and paste and um, maneuver the information on screen. There are a few more edits on screen where we transfer the data around for you so that you don't have to do as much work as um, with the downloadable version, but you're still doing the same process. Um, if you are a vendor who uses EDI, you can still do your EDI process. Um, you just have to generate an additional key under the EDI section to add with your EDI upload, which will transfer the information, your line item information, into your offer request. So let's talk about um, download method. Um, as you can see here, there is, um, I'm sorry, your on-screen method. Um, as you can see here, we have a section that's called Get Started. Um, on this screen, you would copy and paste in all your manufacturer part numbers and the manufacturer name and tell us whether they're a product and, or an accessory. Once you do that, we copy those unique fields to every other tab, as you can see across here. And one thing I want to really mention is that the Get Started and the Pricing tabs are standard tabs. All the other tabs you see across the top of the screen here are based on the selections you made in the wizard. 
So all the information that you provided before would then be transferred down if you did it at the send or the offer level. If not, you would have to, um, if you did it at the line item, you would have to put each individual line in. Uh, where if you did it on the download template, you have to put all the information in. So just uh, information on there. Um, here's the download method. If you do download method, you download your template. As you can see, the template here at the bottom of the screen looks very similar to the one we looked at just a second ago on the screen. Um, it has the same basic um, standard tabs, the customizable tabs, but the first three tabs there at the front are your lookup tabs, your reference tabs, it has your codes, the sins that you selected as part of the um, offer and the definitions of the different fields as reference material for completing the rest of the um, downloadable features. Um, so once you have put all this information in the template and if you are using a download method, you've uploaded the template back to the system and you're ready to um, send your data for the standardization process. There's a button that says um, get standard, uh, standardization information and it sends the information to our third party tool. It does, um, it takes the fields listed here, your MPN, your UPC, product name, description, all those things, and it does the research and brings back all the standardized, uh, standardized data, including the price range. Um, it also goes to uh, GSA Advantage and pull back any standard photos and returns the data to you, the vendor, to review. Once that data is pulled back, you'll see um, a new tab that says um, Offer Analysis Report. And this is the data that you've just gotten back from the standardization process where you can review all the data that came back. Um, there are two tabs on this in this section, one that says action required. That means something fell outside of the price range, either too high or too low. Um, and other fields may have also been standardized, but basically the items in that tab are outside of the price range in some way, shape, form, or fashion. Um, the other tab is no action required. That means that the price fell within the range, but some other data element may have been standardized. For example, the part number may have been changed or the description may have been changed or information in this tab um, was not found for the items that you provided and the um, onus would be on the CO to review those items to determine if they're uh, reasonable for being awarded. So the process for evaluation, um, once you have completed the rest of the e-offer items after uh, providing your data, giving comments and feedback about whether the information in the standardized data is correct, changing those items to make them within the range or not, um, giving comments about why you don't want to change the, the price, uh, which could be valid, could be a reason why you may have um, better warranty and that causes your price to go up a little bit. Um, but once you've done all that and completed the rest of the offer and submit it to your CO, it will go through this normal evaluation process. The CO will review it, you will work on, um, on, they will work from the Excel to do the negotiation, you would do your feedback back and forth, and then the CLs would send their recommendations back for changes to your pricing. You make those changes, send it back for another review until that negotiation is complete and then you would send, um, be ready to make the award of the offer. COs would review that in ORS. Um, the second item here shows the um, file that they would receive to do that initial review and make comments uh, regarding uh, whether something was awarded, rejected, or needed to be negotiated. Um, so this is the sheet that um, the COs will see. It looks just like the sheet that the vendors looked at. It has all the same tabs, whether something was in the range, if it was out of the range, if something was standardized, they see exactly what the uh, vendor saw before submission. Um, so that is pretty much the offer process. Again, as Josh stated earlier, the baseline mod process is basically the same as the offer process. It just contains um, the SINs that are already awarded to your contract. So you will go through all the same steps otherwise. Um, so now jumping into the mod side, there will be one new mod type after the mass mod goes out. So when the mass mod is released, you accept the mass mod. That triggers uh, a change in eMod for you. You would then see capture formatted pricing mod type, which is your baseline mod. 
once you see that in your list, you would select that mod, come in to do your baseline, give us all the items on your contract as they are awarded today. Um, you should not add additional items um, in your award, and then submit that mod for review. Once that mod is awarded, then it would send all your data to Advantage. Your data would be replaced with the items listed in your baseline and overwrite whatever you have existing in GSA Advantage. So these are some of the mod changes, new mod types you will see after the award of the baseline mod. Your order PO's uh, order point of contact is a mod that is currently exists in the PO portal. Um, you'll be able to provide those contacts. That information will flow to the PO portal so that you can continue to get your orders um, for um, any orders against your contract. And then you'll be able to manage your discounts and other mod, new mod types. So let's talk about the order POC a little bit. You're, we have, um, you can have multiple order POCs. Um, you would add a POC, click to add that person, then add another if you need multiple people to be able to see your orders. Um, so this mod type will be available and again will be transferred to downstream applications so that you can still access the PO portal. Um, so the capture formatted pricing mod, your baseline mod, again, here you see that we have pre-populated the SINs that are awarded to this contract. Um, the vendor will then tell us if they're going to do, um, if they're offering products, services, or products only, and the rest of the process uh, is just like what we did on the offer side. You go through the wizard um, and give us all your pricing, submit it to the CO for review after the standardization of the data. Um, so we also have a Create Manage Discounts mod. Once you've given us the discounts in the standardized format, you'll be able to come in and change those discounts as needed. Um, and if you ever need to make changes to, um, if you originally did not have discounts and now you want them, or vice versa, you had discounts and now you don't, you just go back into the wizard to change your status and say, no, I don't want discounts anymore, or I want to change the level of my discount. They were at sin, and I can change them to offer or not. Okay? Um, again, for the discount mods as well as your baseline mods, you would then choose the method in which you're going to submit that data, just like you saw on the offer side. You get the downloadable template, or you can do it on the screen or EDI. You submit that information and submit it um, for standardization. So uh, we received a lot of questions in the last demo about resources for how to submit um, or complete your offer or modification. So we've added a slide here to say that the, the, you will still have access to the eOffer eMod user guide that will be updated with all the information for how to complete the formatted pricing, uh, pro formatted products tool. Um, the help desk have been trained up and staffed up so that they will be able to assist you. We've also created several self-paced tutorials um, that you can go along with that will be accessible per screen. So to be kind of a, what do I need to do on this screen type of help? And um, it will also be available through the help desk links. So if you have questions or concerns and you can't get it through any of these sources, um, the help desk will be able to find someone that will be able to assist you. So. Um, at this time, I'm going to pass it back to Kelly for some additional information. Thanks, Kiana. I appreciate it. Um, so that pretty much um, concludes the, the slides that we were that we needed to go through the information.